All right, go ahead and get out photosynthesis part one, and make sure you're taking notes on your notes. So go ahead and get out those notes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is where it says that it, it defines autotroph and heterotroph. An autotroph is an organism that makes its own food. Okay, so autotroph is a self-feeder. An autotroph is a self-feeder. Uh, organisms that make their own food like plants, algae, and some bacteria. And I want you to write that in because it's not just plants. It's plants, all algae, and algae isn't a plant, and some bacteria. Okay, heterotrophs are organisms, oh, there's algae. Okay, and there's some bacteria too. So, plants, algae, and some bacteria. Okay, so a heterotroph is something that eats it, it eats other food. So, we are heterotrophs. We depend on chickens and cows and vegetables and fruit to get our energy. So, we don't have the ability to take in sunlight energy and make food. We have to eat other organisms for food. And, uh, that would be animals and fungi. So, so write that in for me under heterotrophs. Animals and fungi are heterotrophs. Okay, so plants have this really cool ability to, I know plants don't look cool, but plants have this really awesome ability. They can take in sunlight, take in water, and they can make their own food. And so picture you laying out by the pool, drinking a glass of water, in the sun rays, and you're making sugar. Well, you don't do that, obviously, but plants do. So plants um, do what's called photosynthesis, and they take in sunlight, energy, and water, and they take in CO2, and they make glucose. Okay, so we don't get to do that. We have to eat food from McDonald's or whatever. Okay, so chlorophyll, it, uh, it says chlorophyll is a light-absorbing pigment found in chloroplasts. And I think you probably already know, chlorophyll is the pigment that makes plants green. It says um, it's found in the mesophyll layer, so it's mainly found, like if this is the very top of the leaf, that's the very top, the mesophyll layer is that um, more yellow color. And it's got chloroplasts inside it. Okay, so... If you're looking at the notes, it says um, that there is chloroplast in the mesophyll layer. So it says a light absorbing pigment found in chloroplast of plants. It, the chloroplasts are found in that mesophyll layer. And inside the chloroplast, so you can actually see down here, it, goes, it zooms in a little bit. There's a chloroplast. And inside the chloroplast is the chlorophyll. So write that in for me. The chlorophyll is inside the chloroplast. Okay, so here's the, the chloroplast. You can see, um, let's actually draw it together. Maybe that will be better. Okay, so appropriate to be green, huh? Okay, so the chloroplast has a, it has a cell membrane on the inside. So it has a phospholipid bilayer on the inside and it's shaped in cookies. Or stacks of cookies. Okay, so one cookie is called a thylakoid, and a whole stack of cookies is called a grana or a granum. Okay, so a thylakoid, it says a little green disc that contains chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll is actually inside here. The chlorophyll is inside the thylakoids. Uh, site of the light reaction of photosynthesis. The site of the light reaction for photosynthesis. So this is where part one happens in the thylakoid. And part one is called the light reaction. Okay. Um, and then it tells you that the light reaction actually makes ATP. So I'm actually going to write it up here. The light reaction makes 
ATP and NADPH. So the light reaction, step one, happens inside the thylakoid and it makes ATP and NADPH. Okay, NADPH is a molecule that carries electrons. And for right now, that's all you need to know. But write that in. NADPH is a molecule carries electrons. A molecule that carries electrons. Okay, and then all this other stuff over here is the stroma. So it's almost like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. It says the watery space surrounding the thylakoid. So it's that it's all this out here. It's like the watery substance. Um, it's the site of the Calvin cycle. So step two is called the Calvin cycle. Or it says in your notes, light independent. So you want to know light independent and Calvin cycle mean the same thing. And the purpose of it is to make glucose. So glucose is made in the Calvin cycle. Okay, so let's just real quickly review this. The chloroplast has a membrane inside it called thylakoids. And in the thylakoid, it takes in sunlight energy and it makes ATP and NADPH. So the light reaction uses sunlight energy and changes that energy into cellular energy. The Calvin cycle uses the cellular energy to make glucose. Okay, so photosynthesis, chemical reaction. So let's leave here. Okay, so now you'll see it here. Um, the light reaction, it says, takes in sunlight and water, releases oxygen, and it makes the ATP and NADPH. The Calvin cycle uses CO2, makes sugar. Okay, here's your chemical equation. And so uh, I do want you to write this in. CO2 plus H2O yields C6H12O6 plus oxygen. Okay, so underneath where you wrote that in your notes, I want you to write underneath it the words. So this is carbon dioxide. plus water yields glucose plus oxygen. All right, I want you to pause the video right here, and I want you to memorize this formula. And to balance it, all you do is put sixes in front of it. Six there, there, and there. Six in front of everything but the sugar. Okay, so take a minute. Memorize this formula. Carbon dioxide plus water yields glucose plus oxygen and the reason being is because I want you to be able to write this formula tomorrow in class for me. Okay so looking at your notes it says um, starts by taking in sunlight energy and converting it into chemical energy. So that's really this part right here. You see the light going in and you see how it makes ATP and NADPH right here, those are your chemical energies. Okay, then takes the chemical energy and uses the chemical energy to power the production of sugar. So the Calvin cycle, part two, takes ATP and NADPH and makes sugar. So the light reaction has to happen to give energy to the Calvin cycle. Okay, so it says on B, on, well, that's really the second B. There's a typo there. Um, it says the formula CO2 plus water in the presence of sunlight make sugar and oxygen. Okay, sugar is stored in chemical energy for cellular respiration. So sugar is stored energy. Sugar is stored energy. Sugar is stored energy. Okay, the water splits, um, and that's where the oxygen comes from, where water splits. So the oxygen that's released comes from the water, not from the CO2. 
Okay, and then it just tells you the two reactions. The light reaction changes sunlight into, so it changes solar energy into chemical energy. The Calvin cycle makes sugar. Okay, and then it says NADP plus is converted into NADPH. Okay, look. Those, I know those letters you haven't seen before, so pay attention. Right here, NADPH. NADP plus. I want you to think about it like it's a school bus, and it carries electrons. So it, it's a, this is an empty school bus. It carries electrons. Okay, and then when one electron gets on, it takes the positive away. When a second electron gets on, it is NADPH because it's a hydrogen electron. So NADP plus is an empty school bus. NADPH is a school bus that's carrying two electrons, which is the maximum amount. So it says NADP plus is converted to NADPH by picking up two negative electrons. ADP is phosphorylated. ADP, phosphorylated, and, and you know what that means. It adds a phosphate. A, so when ADP gets, when ADP gets a phosphate, it becomes ATP. And that was on your last test. Okay, so let's talk about sunlight. It says sunlight, which is high quality energy, sunlight travels in waves. And so one ray of sunlight, which is called a photon, one ray of sunlight, which is called a photon, is, appears clear. But it really has all the, that's a visible, a visible light has all the colors in it. And so, you know, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Okay, well, so one ray of light has all those colors in it. Okay, so when you see um, this, I just really want you to see it. All this is showing you is the wavelength. So red has a wavelength of 750 nanometers. So, so longer wavelengths, lower energy while violet has shorter wavelengths and higher energy. Okay, so if you look right here, um, I actually want to show you a graph right here. Okay, so if you look right here, this is showing you what is absorbed. So just look at this first picture for me, the first graph. And so when a, when a plant takes in green when it takes in the visible light, it absorbs the colors except green. It reflects green. So plants reflect green. That's why they look green in appearance. They reflect green. So you don't see, you don't see what is absorbed. You only see what's reflected. Okay, so let's just look at the chlorophyll A line. Okay, so the purple and the violet, those colors are absorbed. That's why plants' leaves don't appear purple. Okay, and then you can see right here they, they don't absorb blue, green, yellow, and then they do absorb the orange and red. And so um, they reflect the color that you see. Okay, so in your notes it says absorb. These colors are usable light. So the sun actually uses the purple and the the blue and the red. So actually plants hate the color green. They're reflecting the color green. They're they're pushing green back at back out. And so it says plants use reds and blues but not green. So they reflect green. Okay, and then if you look at this picture it shows you let's remove all that. Okay, um, chlorophyll A, that's the main pigment, and that's why plants are mainly green. And then chlorophyll B and carotenoids are just accessory pigments. They help. And so what those do is they absorb sunlight and then they pass it on to chlorophyll A. They absorb sunlight and then pass it on. Photosystems are groups of proteins that absorb the sunlight. Okay, and so if you look 
There's what chlorophyll looks like. And do you see how it's got the MG in the center? That's magnesium. It's got two little uh, electrons on the outer shell. So magnesium has, if you look at the periodic table, has two electrons in its outer shell. And that, when it absorbs the sunlight, it releases those electrons. All right, so um, right here, ask the question, chlorophyll molecules contain magnesium in the center. How many electrons are in magnesium? And so our answer was two. Okay, so there's your photosystems. Photosystems are inside the thylakoids. So make sure to underline that. They're inside the thylakoids, and they absorb sunlight. And there's two different ones. There's photosystem one, which absorbs sunlight rays at about 700. And then there's photosystem two that absorbs sunlight wavelengths at about 680. And there's photosystem one and two in the thylakoids. And there's chlorophyll inside the photosystems. All right, I hope that was helpful.